Hello! Kind of thought I would do a quick video on how the plant markers that I am using on a regular basis are made. And that way you can get an idea of what I've been using in the pots. Um, based off of a tip from Edible Acres, I started looking for China markers, which are the things that you see used in um, restaurants. You know, when you walk into the restaurant and they've got all the tables laid out and the host is writing down which table is in use and which one's getting cleaned and which one's freed up and they got like a rag there and they got a bunch of these. I still haven't figured out how to actually sharpen them using the little string, but that's okay. I, uh, I have other skills. My skills do not involve using anything other than a razor blade to sharpen these. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, if someone has tips, it's fine. Otherwise, you know, it's it's cool because I totally am all right with using that. These hold up way better than Sharpie and permanent marker in the rain. And additionally, they come off with friction, which is much, much nicer. The ones that Edible Acres use are the same ink, but they're in a plastic dispenser. And I thought this was... um kind of less plastic the better kind of sort of thing. These kind of have a weird film on them. So what I do, and I think I did a video like this a long time ago when I didn't have very good recording equipment and before I had a good um, label marker. What I do is I cut down in strips around mm, these are the rim can be pretty stiff especially if it's older plastic it's been like out on the porch for a while exposed to some temperature changes or whatever but once you get past that first bit it's easy and if you want to try it a lot of older brittle plastic will actually um snap by hand and then you can arrange where your cuts are going to be that way. I'll show you that probably on the one on the left I would think would be more likely. So I'm cutting these at plant label width um, with my handwriting in mind. Um, knowing what kind of things I generally write on them I find that this, this width is pretty good. And so now you have this weird flower pattern going on and I just go along and I cut it an angle. And you can see I'm holding on to the next piece so that it doesn't fall down every time I snip. You kind of see the way I grip it. And I store these in terracotta flower pots a lot of times, but um, just any sort of cup really will work kind of stack them and put them in a cup like that. Then this part can go in the recycling. It has, um, it does have the recycling number on it, so that tends to help. Let's see if this one will just snap for us the way I'm used to. No, not really. Maybe this one will. A little bit, a little bit, but not really. A lot of times if you have one that's real brittle and that won't cut, like if you can't get through it with the scissors, you can go down like this. Yeah, there you go. And just bust through it that way and then cut it the rest of the way with the scissors. As you can see, this is kind of an older um, Aldi cup which actually had holes poked in the bottom as a pot, but I find that um, this is better. I do have some of them utilized as pots, but I would not do that again. In fact, I'm looking to pot those up and see what pots I have that will fit in the openings because 
having these available as plant tags is much more valuable to me than having the additional yogurt size of pot. I didn't quite cut the whole way through. It's a little harder to see where you're cutting to when it's not pure white. But as you can see, of course, you're not going to write on that side, but you're going to write on this side. And for example, I know I need to label one of those soon. So I can just write it there. And that's a uh, Pittsburgh water. That's, there's a reservoir where I get the one variety of elderberry from. And just kind of keep going. And for reference as well, we can write test here. And then you can see how just rubbing it several times can really clear the slate there. I'm not in frame, sorry. Uh, so now it's, it's ready to be written on again. And it is more sun and water resistant than a permanent marker Sharpie is, which is remarkable. I did bring in several snake root um, seeds and they're in the fridge now in a paper bag. I did not yet bring in the amaranth seeds, maybe tomorrow. I think it's supposed to be warmer tomorrow. I was just not feeling up to a whole lot today kind of sad, but you know, there's just so much to do in fall, but I have this week off and that's going to help a lot, but this is how I make my in the pot pot labels and a lot of friends have been willing to save me up their yogurt containers and to those friends, thank you and you want to continue saving them for me? Yes, these definitely go to use. Definitely, definitely. So, I know that's a bit loud. I appreciate you. Saving those up for me. It's really, really useful. Yeah, I had noticed I used them all up, so I knew I needed to make at least a few more. And I don't even necessarily clean out the yogurt containers before doing this, but um, if you're going to do it inside, it's nicer to have them clean. So That's a pretty decent stack of plant labels off of just three yogurt containers there. It'll help. It'll help a lot. And yeah, some of the backs are a little colorful, and some of them aren't, but the fronts are kind of perfect. And then these, I can rinse them up a bit because they're dirty from outside, and I can put them in the recycle. And of course, there was the film on that, and I don't know if, I don't know what kind of, it, I highly doubt this is actually a film plastic that can be recycled because it doesn't stretch. Our film plastic takes number two and number four plastic. What the? There's a goji berry there. That's weird. All right. So, yep. I got all kind of weird little crap I got to do. Dishes and laundry being on the list as well, but that's one little project out the way, and I thought you'd appreciate seeing how I make the plant levels that go in the pots. I still really want to figure out a way to make taller labels and organize into sections as soon as I'm capable of it, because it's, it's a little difficult to... I think the theme from that video ended up being if, um, 
if I could just stay a little bit below capacity, like not be maxing out my materials all the time and grow a little bit below capacity throughout the process, I would probably much better be able to handle getting organized. And the idea of putting a mulch filled pot into the empty spot until I can fill it with something that makes more sense for it to be there sounds really good. And an additional thought I had from that, that was from Formidable Flora that said that. Um, the additional thought I had from that is that once the wine caps start doing well, I could use wood chip mulch with spawn to produce spawn in the pots as they're awaiting. I do need to figure out a clear way to mark empty versus growing just in case that becomes a clear unclear at any point but I think this is all very good ideas and good stuff for going forward so there's some organizational tools uh, out of recycled processes for permaculture purposes and I hope you enjoyed this thank you for vis visiting the cliffside but inside the house this time and I hope you're having a really good day this has been permaculture thanks bye <laughs>